everyone, welcome to this next video, which is from Small Victories by Johanna Basford. Um, I have done the first couple of um, rows of little items on this page. We're going to be doing another row of them in this video. Let us come in a little bit closer. We have an adorable cup full of flowers, which I'm going to do first, and uh, then I will move along and uh, do the rest of the items. I thought I might do something a little bit different with this cup and do maybe the stripes in gold and silver. You know, I just thought it would be a little bit different. So let's make a start with that. Let's start with the silver. I'm just having a look at what colours I can use, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in this set. I think I'll start with the slate grey. Is that the slate grey? Yeah. So start with that as my darkest colour. I just got distracted. There's a little magpie on the chimney opposite and there's one in the guttering as well. The, um, on the roof there. Uh, I'm just sharpening my pencil. I'm not just looking at magpies and not doing anything. <laughs> it's slate grey. So I'm going to do the top one here. So I want it really intense on this very end and then just sort of fade it down a bit like that and do the same at the other end and we'll add some other greys to create a um, sort of gradient of colour a bit more on this edge and then just fade it down yeah I've got both my children at home now one of them was in um, uni this morning and he's returned the other one has the day off so it's very quiet still though, um, neither of them have got any work to do apparently. I doubt that myself but you know, well winter lake, I know they both do but one of them says he hasn't had enough information to be able to start and the other one is too tired. He was actually a bit poorly yesterday to be fair to him so I don't know if he's got much energy still. He went in anyway, he was said he was still felt a little bit unwell but he was okay. But it was he needed to go in which was um he didn't realise which class he had actually so near the beginning of term he doesn't remember. But he had to do some practical lab work which he can't do at home. So it was very good that he went in and got that done. Now our very last colour, I want a really pale one. Um I'm just having a little look at my colours. Mm, I think the fell mist is probably the best. It's always quite tricky. Try and make sure they're sort of cold greys rather than the more brownish greys which don't really look so silvery. And put a bit here now. I'm trying to work out where my centre is. It's about there. So I'll put a bit here and a little bit there like that. Fill this side in. There we go. It's quite pale, this colour, isn't it? Might need a bit of something there. It's a bit too... It's also a little bit brown. It's not quite what I was hoping for. Never mind. I will put that back. And I will have a little look again. Um, um, I'm thinking the moon rock. Let's pop a bit of moon rock on top. Not real moon rock. My son's touched a bit of moon rock. He just, he was so overwhelmed when he'd done it when he came home. He'd studied um, geology at A level and his college um, borrowed some samples, rock samples, from, I think it was from the Natural History Museum in London. And they got shipped over in a box and they all got to handle them carefully. And moon rock. He was just like blown away. I think I would be too. Right, now we're going to go our gold colour. Now I'm looking at this now, it looks like it should be Port Mary in China, you know, the white and blue, but never mind. It's uh, it's going to be transformed in a moment. Now I want a really dark brown to start with. I think I am going to use the licorice. It's really, really dark, almost black, but I'm only going to use a little bit. 
you do need to press gently with this because it is so intense so if you're a bit worried that you might press too hard then maybe use a lighter colour so just do a little bit and fade so really not very much of this intense colour it's quite nice to have that contrast from dark to light but too dark certainly not as it go spreads along from that edge a bit here I'm going to do a bit on this handle too this handle isn't actually going to be cold but this dark color will work you'll see I'm just saving myself a little bit of time for later now I need a lighter brown for our gold um, I think the willow could be quite a good colour. Here it is. Is that it? Yeah. It's got a slightly reddish tint to it, which I think could work. I've been trying to keep up with my editing and things today because my son's going to be live streaming this evening, so I won't be able to upload anything onto YouTube then because it makes everything too slow to stream if we're uploading here apparently some people don't have that problem but where we live our internet isn't brilliant for uploading things i'm going to now use the brown sugar bring it in we're almost done with this one um Yes, yeah, so I have to be a little bit careful, but we, yeah, we don't have the best um, coverage. It's good for um, downloading, so watching films, playing games, online games and things like that, it works very well. But when you want to upload, it just doesn't have that capacity. And I find that quite strange. I don't really understand it. I'm like, why can it work for one and not the other? Surely it's all the same, but no. Apparently it's very, very different and I just don't really understand. I'll have to ask my son, who's, who's our golden son, who's doing um, computer studies because he might be able to explain it to me better. My husband is really bad at explaining technical things. So you leave a tiny gap and it looks like there's some bit of shine there where it's catching the light. Um, my husband is terrible at explaining technical things. He can't make it simple enough um he you know i mean i'm not like stupid but i don't it's not my area of expertise so i need a bit of help now the handle i want to make it look a little bit more bronzy so i'm gonna actually put an orange in it at this point um i think hmm, i'm just looking at my swatch chart i think the Filet might be the best orange to use. So I'm going over everything with this just to get that orange. Look. And we want a bit there. And I'm going to use the same colour. Oops. Sorry, I was just fiddling with my pencil case. I'm going to use the Golden Sun again on the top. I'm hoping that this will look like a different colour to the... Um, it does. It looks different to those. A little bit more orangey. Let's come down a bit so you can see right. Um, now our flower centres, I don't want to use a colour I've used already. Just having a little thing. I quite like a Naplesy type colour, but we don't have many of those. We have a sand castle. Maybe I'll try that. It's a little bit sort of browner, if you know what I mean. It just looks a bit different to the bright, vibrant yellows. So here we go. And I'm going to do all the flower centres the same colour. Like I did with, excuse me, actually all of the pictures on here so far. These, I'm going to colour, I don't know, maybe as if they're sort of berries or something. Certainly not yellow. 
there are our flower middles and I'm looking at our flowers and I'm thinking these two are the same, these two are the same and these three are the same, I think. So I'm going to do just three different colours of florals. Um, we can start. Um, let's try. What's that colour look like? I'm going to try the melon. I think it looks quite peach-like this melon rather than being orangey I'm going to sharpen it it looks like one of those melons that have got uh, orange inside and a, a green skin I can't remember what they're called um, so I'm going to do these in this peachy colour it didn't sharpen very well it's got a bit of a chip I swear my sharpener needs a new uh, new blade anyway but uh, yeah it doesn't really look like that orangey melon actually just putting it down like this but anyway you've got that sort of cute peachy colour so that's our first one maybe we'll keep everything a little bit um, muted is the word I'm looking for oh so I think I might go for the light mauve um, there it is I'm not going to go for the colours that are really, really pale, but uh, for the uh, sort of paler set of colours. I think I'll do these three in this. Again, I'm not going to do anything too fancy. I'm just going to block them in. I hope that we can see this, actually. I didn't think it was that pale. I think, yeah, once I colour it over a few layers, it um, shows up enough. That's good. Interesting. I was just thinking, you know, what colour am I going to do my berries? And I thought, I can't do them blue. Why don't we get blue berries? We don't really get very many blue flowers, but we get a few. You know, cornflower, forget-me-nots, um, grape hyacinths always look a bit blue. Well, they're probably more sort of periwinkle, slightly lilac-y. Um, you know, so we do get blue flowers, but we just don't get any blue berries. We don't, I suppose we don't get blue food either. So I'm going to use a pale blue for these two. Um, I'm going to use the blue orchid though, rather than going for the really pale glacier blue. I'm just going to find it. There it is. I'm just going to sharpen it a bit. There we go. So the... Um, orchid so we're going with light I want the um cup to stand out really I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for the leaves but I'll have a look in a minute and those berries we might do a pink berry because I think that'll work these I suppose that's pink isn't it I thought maybe a really pale purple I'll see what I've got But yes, we don't get blueberries or really blue food. I mean, blueberries, okay, but they're not really blue, are they? They're sort of purple. I don't think they're blue anyway. And there's no other blue food. They say eat the rainbow. Well, apart from blue. <laughs> it's quite interesting. I was reading something the other day that said, don't forget when you're eating the rainbow, you should be eating beige. I was like, well, I thought beige foods were supposed to be bad. You know, but it said explained that um um I'm just looking for my next colour for my berry colour basically. I'm gonna go with the blush pink. Um but it explained that beige um blush pink there you go mushrooms are beige and nuts. So, you know usually, you know, when they talk about eating the rainbow they're referring to vegetables and fruit or plants or fibre, fibre based foods, that sort of thing. Now I don't really want to do the pastel mint, but our other pale colours are the spring bud, which is so bright. I think I am going to have to do the pastel mint actually. So, yeah. so I'm going to just um, do what I said I wasn't going to do. It's getting dark again. 
it's uh, light and dark, light and dark today. You know, it's rained, it hasn't rained. My um, son, who was out, managed to escape the rain, which was good. So uh, I was pleased for him. I mean, I know the rain isn't the end of the world, but he was feeling a bit poorly. And uh, nice soon to be able to get home and not, not have to get wet and dry out and, you know, all those things. So uh, that's all good. There is our pastel mint. It is really pale. This is quite a wishy-washy looking picture, isn't it? Not sure if I like it. I think I'm going to darken some bits because I don't like it. Um, you can leave it as it is if you wish, but I am going to um, darken up some areas. So I'm going to start with the greens. I'm going to get this pine green. I'm going to darken up the base of these flowers. Leaves. <laughs> oh dear. I can never tell the difference. I mean, I, of course I can tell the difference. My brain just gets the wrong word. Right. My sister was saying just now how um, she was had a lot of homework from her master's degree that she was doing. It was tricky and I sort of said to her, do you think it's because you've had such a long gap without studying? I'm not sure how long she has had, to be honest, but um, I could easily work it out, actually. Um, it's probably 20 plus years. And um, let me look. Now we use, this one was the light mauve. I think I'll use the French mauve a little bit. I'm just going to sharpen it. Um, but she said no, it's just because we had a lot of homework for this module this week, we had more than normal. But um, I think I might find it quite tricky, but I, it's not like I don't learn things. You know, I do read books, listen to podcasts and things like that and sort of learn new ideas. But I don't have to then you know, summarise them and then write assignments on them and things like that. I think I could do it, to be honest. But I don't think I would have the time. That's a whole different thing. All the uh, motivation. I don't really want to. So the blue orchid we used, um, I'm just trying to see if there's a slightly... De I'm going to use the lapis blue to darken that one up a little bit. Just in the centre, I think. Just put a bit around the, that yellow centre and then just scumble it out a little bit. And here it needs to be here. Oh, I'm feeling much better about this now. I'm liking it much more. And the last one is that sort of melon colour, wasn't it? I'm going to have to use... Oh! Oh, that might... The deep vermilion. That might work. See, deep vermilion for me is usually red, but this colour, uh, sharpen it. But I think studying can help keep our brain sharp. I'm actually reading a new book at the moment, and it's got some really interesting new ideas, and not very good. I think as we get older, we get less good at taking on new ideas. I don't know what about you. But um, if someone um, um, sort of says something that doesn't agree with something that I've known for a long time, you sort of question it, don't you? you think, Is that Are they right? Are they wrong? Um, I'm trying to decide on what colour to do these um, mushrooms. I want to do them a nice purple colour. Um, you know, and you think, well, I've believed this for so long. If I then change my mind, am I going to look like a bit of an idiot because I've... You know, I've suddenly changed my mind. I'm looking for the Aztec purple. There it is. You know, am I silly because I believe this? Or is it just that the thinking has changed? Now, I'm going to put a really light layer of this across all the caps of every mushroom. Don't press too hard because I've got some other magic tricks to do with it after. So, um, yes, yeah, so I find it quite difficult. And sometimes I think... Having read about this, it's quite interesting that if somebody questions a belief that you've held for a long time, that's part of your, that you f you really associate with, you feel part of it, then that can be very difficult um, 
for example, um, if you are a, um, let's say, you're, um, you, you believe that, um, that having fruit juice is healthy and then someone comes out and tells you that actually, no, it's not. Um, it's got too much sugar in and you shouldn't be having it. This is quite a recent thing, actually, um, that has happened in the UK where we used to be told to drink a glass of juice every day. It was one of our five a day, etc. And now some people are saying, actually, I'm now going to use the lilac. Um, actually, it, that's quite bad um, for us. Um, we shouldn't be doing it. We should be having um, fruits, having the fibre as well as the fruit, this sort of thing. Um, lilac. But I think if you've been doing this, um, I'm going to go against the line here and then fade towards the outside of our mushroom like that. I'm going to do that on each line. And if you really enjoy fruit juice and you've been doing it for a long time, thinking it's healthy, and maybe even think it feeling healthier for it, you suddenly question, is this person right? Have I been doing things wrong all the time? Have I been harming my health? All that sort of thing. And some people might delve into the, the um, research and read all the studies so that they can find out for themselves. Other people might just deny it and say, no, I don't want to believe that. I don't... What I know about it is seems to make sense and I'm not going to change, you know. And there are different attitudes of different people. And I think it depends partly on how strong your belief was to start with. But maybe how much you like doing it. You know, if you could, if you're forcing yourself to drink some fruit juice each day and you're not really enjoying it, then you might be very happy to have an excuse for giving it up. But um, if... Um, if it's something you really enjoy, then it's quite difficult, isn't it? Um, so uh, it's uh, it is it's an interesting one. This can happen with any belief on anything, whether it might be religious, political, um, ethical, you know, whatever you might have a strong belief about that um, gets questioned, and often when our beliefs that make up who we are let's say we like a political particular political party we aspire to be like that party we feel we're part of it it's part of us and then something happens there's a scandal or something goes wrong in the party and it all looks <coughs> excuse me a bit nasty it, your whole um, belief system is being questioned it's not very nice no. This is rose quartz. It's our slightly pinky grey, which I think might work for the stems of these. Um, so it's a very interesting concept. And if you have ever tried to talk to someone who had a really strong belief about something which you didn't agree with, you will notice how the more you try to um, convince them that your way of thinking is correct, the more they dig their heels in and they won't listen or change their mind. Have you ever noticed that? Well, apparently that is definitely a thing that has been observed. That if someone's... I'm just trying to look for a colour for my woody bit of my pencil. I think I'm going to use the biscotti. Um... Apparently, if you want somebody to listen to your point of view, a better approach, that's very grey, isn't it? I'm going to put something on it to light, to sort of warm it up a little bit. I'm going to, oh yeah, Oop. Um, the saffron mango. I think that will just add enough colour to make it look slightly less grey. That's better. So I'm looking at like this wood on this pencil, trying to make it look a bit like that. Although this wood looks a bit red. Anyway, there we go. And what colour pencil? Well, I think we'll do a slightly different pencil. We could make it the colour of the mushrooms, but I think we'll make it a little more interesting by picking a pinkish colour. Maybe a... Yes, let's go for the Mardi Gras. 
here we go. So I think, so apparently research has shown that the best thing to do is to listen to the other person's point of view. Make sure they realise that you understand what their point of view is. So repeat it back to them in different words. So if they say, I believe, blah, 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 you say, oh, so you think this, 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 and you just use slightly, and they're like, yes. So they know that you're listening and understanding, and that is a really good start to a debate. I'm trying to make it a little bit more shadowy under here. I'm going to put a little bit there, keep it lighter on the top. I know we would have shadows from the mushrooms, but I think that's it's okay. Now I'm trying to decide what to do with these stars. Oh, I've got a fun coloured pen actually I might use. Maybe. I've got this colour pen here. Whoop, I can't get it out of the bag. Um, it is one of the Sakura Stardust pens. And it's num Moonlight pens. Sorry, 422. I think I'm going to use it for the dots, not the actual stars. Um, I'm going to do it. Let's see what colour it is. So yes, apparently, once you've sort of, I'm going to do the stars as well with this. Once you've, they understand that you know what their point of view is, they're more likely to then listen to yours. Um, I think there are probably some people who will never change their mind anyway. But um, if you don't listen to them, why would they listen to you? You know, It's not always easy though, is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm a rubbish listener to be honest I'd like to put a little bit of white oh, no stars but I can't do it right now so we're going to do this oh <laughs> such a cute such a cute picture and we'll do this one first we'll come back right mushroom in the house I swear I have done some of these for you before on uh, in a video but not the whole page I wonder if they were in the postcard book Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm having fun and I hope you are too. Now, colour wise, I'm going to start with the Sangria. I rather like this colour. Here it is. And I'm going to colour the um, mushroom so that it's darker at the base and lighter on the tip. So, this is going to be my darkest colour. So, I'm going to start to fade it. Oops. So really dark along there and then just sort of scumble it a little bit, do less layers and just bring it gently up a little bit like that. Right, and then we're going to go to a slightly um, less bright colour. I haven't planned this. Um, hmm. <laughs> We didn't plan this very well. Right, change of plan. Back to the sangria. Take the colour right to the top. But gently, really lightly. Because I want this to be the underlying colour. I'm just going to sharpen this pencil. I really should have sharpened it better at the beginning. Just trying to put some more layers down like that. There we go. What time is it? Oh, fine. I was just wondering whether it's cooking time yet, but it's nowhere near. Although my son will want us to cook on time because he's he's doing a stream later. Right, I've got the Turkish Delight colour here. I'm just giving it a sharpen. Oops, we're going to use this for the top area. Here it is. So it will we'll see some of this red in it, but um, some of it will be obscured by this pink. There we go.
Right, we have a little window there. Um, hmm, I've got a chimney. Right, I think I'll do the stem and the chimney the same colour. And I might do them in a salmon. It's quite a pale colour. But like, it's a bit different to always doing um, grey, which is what I tend to fall back on, don't I? So there it is. And this bit here too. Yeah, this is a bit different, isn't it? And I'm going to use the Shiraz for the gills. Now, this is a very dark colour, so I'm only going to put it on lightly, like really gently. <clears throat> and then build that colour up just there so that it creates the illusion of a bit of shadow. And I'm also going to put a little tiny bit oops, under here and here and even under there. There we go. And our door. I just want it all to match. There we go. Right, we need some grass. We've done grass on our very first page, picture on this page, I mean. Oops, hang on. Just turn my pencil case onto my greens. But I think we'll do this one quite different. Um, why not? So I will start. Let me have a quick look at those colours. That's too yellow. Um, I'm going to start with the key lime. It's quite a very light, bright colour. Gosh, the sky has gone very black. I think it's going to rain. Oh, lucky ill inside. I was going to go out today. I never got round to it. I just got involved in doing things. And tomorrow I've got to stay in because I'm expecting at least one parcel. I suppose I could go out later, but I probably won't feel like it later, knowing me. So that's the key lime. I'm going to put something on top. I'm just having a little look at what I've got that I think will work. I think the Lincoln Green will work. We haven't used the Lincoln Green. Um, where even is it? Here. Um, in this page yet. So it's quite nice to use a different colour, isn't it? Now Lincoln Green is quite grey or brown-ish. But I think we can use it to put some tufts in this grass. Yeah, it's probably a little bit too brown, really, but it's different, and that's what I was hoping for. There we go. Right, now we need to think about those windows. I think I'm just going to put a little bit of grey in there. Um, Oxford grey will work quite well, I think. There it is. I'm going to give it a good sharpen. Oh, it's getting blacker and blacker. My window is filthy. The top of the window is actually black. So try to clean it. I can never been able to reach to clean it. Oxford grey. Um, no, I've never been able to reach to clean it. So I'm going to make that side white and this bottom corner grey to make it look as it's catching the light just there. Um, so I've never ever cleaned it. So I've been in this house. Oh no, the windows are aren't as old as the house, so about 15 years old, so that's never been, hasn't been cleaned for 15 years. It's quite a long time, isn't it? Quite a long time. Right, um, what colour am I going to use for our smoke? Pebble. I'm going to use a pebble. Um, there it is. It's quite a brownie grey, I think, the pebble. I'm just going to sort of go round and round. I haven't really thought about how I'm going to do this glass. I think if I make this smoke darker either side, leave the bit in the glass a little bit lighter. That's a good start. Sort of gives the impression that that rim bit that is a bit thicker glass, which I think it would be. 
So that's the first step towards getting our glass done. Now we've done a couple of bits of, we've done lots of glass actually in very different ways. Um, I, we could do a sky in this one. Yeah, let's do that. I've got a little idea. Right, red. Oh, what is she doing? Why is she using red? Um, yeah. Cardinal red. Just a tad. Gonna do a sunset slash rise in our jar. Sunrise in a jar. Why not? So a little bit here. Wanna not do too much because we've got red there. We'll try and get past the red stage before we uh, get to that bit of mushroom. A bit of red. Um, I'm going to go straight to red orange next. Um, where are you there? Can't get a hold of it. Red orange. Put that on top. Um, I need to sharpen it. I'm trying to sort of fade it as I go up. Obviously it's going to be darker right, it's on top of that red. Then we want to go for more of a reddy yellow type colour. I know the clementine's quite light. Yeah, I think that's going to work, clementine. I'm going to have to sharpen it. And we'll pass the ready stage so we can go up to the mushroom. Oh, it's raining. Eh, clementine. So we had the uh, Abora, Aurora Borealis over the other night. And there was something called Steve, which is a... Um, What's the word? Uh, the initial stand for something. I can't think what the word for that is. And um, so it only comes at the same time as the Aurora. Clementine. Um, amber gold. And um, it's like a sort of almost a laser beam of pink going upwards. Whereas the Aurora always seems to sort of go across the sky. And uh, it was pretty spectacular from the photos. Here we couldn't see it. Um, you know, obviously you can only see it at certain locations. It was cloudy as well. So had it even been anywhere near here, we wouldn't have been able to see it. To pop a little bit in there. And so, uh, yeah, we didn't see it. But the photo, I still like looking at the photos. Um, last colour, yellow. Um, sunflower. Um, it's uh, it's quite. It seems to always be on a cloudy night. I have seen a trace of the aurora borealis before when I um, I looked out of the window on a day when it was supposed to be around, and I couldn't see the horizon clearly. We've got buildings and things in the way, but I was just looked at as low on the horizon as I could see from where I was, and the sky looked like it had a little bit of a green tinge, and I was thinking, is that it? Or is it just um, the light, the street lamps and things? Not that street lamps are green, but you know, is there some lights or something I'm seeing? Is it my imagination? What is it? Is it really there? I'm going to use the Oxford grey, if I can find it. There it is. Um, to colour in the edge of this. Um, but the next day, I looked out at the same time and it wasn't there. So I'm thinking... Perhaps I did see a little bit of it, but where we live, um, we're in a down in the valley, so it's a rubbish place to see. You're really supposed to go up on top of the hill where you, and look down over the horizon. But I'm going to leave little bits of uncoloured white fading into white so that it looks like there's a bit of shine on our glass. Here I've got to colour over the smoke, the smoke's inside. There we go. 
Now I haven't done the circles on the mushroom. I don't want to. I like them being left white. If you want to do them, by all means, colour them in. Um, but I'm going to use my Jelly Roll 8 to put a little bit of shine. Oh, itchy nose. On the edge of the glass. And the glass slopes slightly inwards. So I need to sort of follow that. I like my line to be sort of parallel with the edge of the glass. And I'm going to do one on this side too. With a little break. A little bit more there. Um, I'm wondering whether I'm just going to take the very top of those out. Sometimes that can help to give the illusion that they're a slightly three-dimensional but because they're flat around they, they go around the back of the mushroom it might not work but anyway there we go so let's move on and do our last little item which is this key and flower now we can do the key in gold we can do it in silver we can do it in bronze we could do it black red green blue <laughs> any color we want um rusty Hmm, rusty. Right, I've got a plan. I've given myself a plan. Right, we are going to use this gold metallic pencil to start with and we are going to put a few areas on here. Um, a bit here, so fade to there. A bit there. A bit here. Can see I'm just doing a few random bits okay it's a bit of an experiment and then we're going to use our silver pencil this is the plain silver there's an ice silver and a silver mint I want the plain silver and go over the whole of it don't burnish it down too hard I want to be able to see those gold bits sort of through the silver I'm going over those bits really gently Okay, so we've got a sort of dirty looking mess going on, like that. Have I done it all? Yeah. Then we take a colour that we're going to use to put in some shadow. Um, let me have a look. I think the slate grey might be our friend here. Here he is, slate grey. And going to put a little bit of shadow here and under there. I'm going to put a tad on each end of that and here. And a bit in here. So I'm sort of thinking rusty key. I don't know. If you don't like it, do the gold or silver like on our teapot or something. I don't that. I think it's quite interesting and different. Now I am really hoping that a book that I'm getting tomorrow is going to have some um, instructions on how to colour rust because I don't really know how to do it. I mean that was just a guess. I'm going to use um, a raisin colour for the ribbon because this is almost a rusty red and I think it might just help to make that rusty bit stand out a bit more. Um, Yes, yeah, so tomorrow, well, this video is going out a long, I'm recording it a long way in advance, but I'm getting a book and uh, by Helen Elliston, she's doing a spooky book, oh, excuse me, and um, I, I've got that on order, I know it's being delivered tomorrow, I've had notification, there'll be a flip through right away and you'll be able to see what's in it and decide if it's something that you want to buy, I find them amazing. Now next to our rusty key we've got a flower. I feel that we should be doing some colours, rusty type colours still. So we've got our ribbon. So I'm going to grab this red wood and uh, do our petals with this. Why not? I need to sharpen it though. Um, yeah, so I'll be getting that book which I'm excited about. And uh, as I say, through the... Um, through the post tomorrow. I'll do a flip through as soon as it arrives. It would already be on my channel by now. 
and I'm hoping there's a rust tutorial because she gave a little hint that she was doing a rust um, tutorial, um, you know, written tutorial for a book, but way before I ever knew that she was bringing this one out, so I assume it's for this book, but I don't know for sure. And I want to do some rusty pictures. Um, Worlds of Wonder, the shark, the metal shark. Um, I'd like to do some rust on him. Um, I'm going to use the burnt sienna, I think, for the um, for the next layer in our flower. This bit here. too small to do anything with but just lay some colour down and then for that centre I'm going to go dark um, um, oak it's a dark brown oak I'm just going to sharpen it though it's raining again silly weather rain stop rain stop <laughs> so it might be a bit unusual this flower but it's a bit different isn't it so around the edge, I'm going to try and make it a bit darker than in the middle. Such a small space. Oh, I just heard a noise like thunder. Could very well have been. Oh no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was my neighbour's garage door. <laughs> right, I am going to use some of this leaf green. It's really dark. Now I don't want all of my leaves to be really dark, but I'm going to do the stem dark. If I can find an edge to cut it with, there we go. Like that. Then do a bit here and just sort of fade it into the leafy bits like that. And then I'll get a slightly lighter, brighter colour to sort of give it a bit of something. <laughs> bit of something brightness there we go what goes with this colour let me have a look on my chart I think it's going to be the foliage my favourite why not here it is foliage I'm just going to take the colour all the way to the tips as you can see, it's a little bit lighter and brighter. I'm going to put some colour on this um, flower to make it look a little bit brighter. I'm thinking I'm not that happy with the um, colour of the petals, to be honest. It was a bit of an experiment. I'm not very keen on. If you like it, then just leave it it's just my personal taste it's you know so what I'm gonna do first is put my foliage pencil away then grab the lemon lime I'm just gonna sharpen it I'm gonna put it on top of those leaves bit of brightness bit of warmth I just remembered I was going to do something with my white pen on those little mushrooms, which I haven't yet come back to. I'll do that in a second. So that's the lemon lime. I'm just going to do grab my smaller jelly roll, number five. These stars. I'm going to put a dot in each corner. And a slightly bigger one in the middle. To get the bigger one, you'll just have to roll the pen round a bit more. There we go. I prefer that. Now, on this one, I'm going to use... Hmm, will that show up? I'm going to... I don't know how well this will show up. I'm going to try it, but I think didn't really show up. This is the number 415 of the um, Jelly Roll Moonlight pens. See if it shows up. No. 
No, not at all. Okay, we'll have to use white. That's a shame. Never mind. Back to the number five white. <laughs> And I'm just going very much around the edge of that middle bit there. And I want to put a little one on here. You might want to use a yellow or an orange if you've got them. Like an Aposco or a gel pen. I'm going to leave it like that though. There we go. So let's have a look at all of the... Uh, all of this row which has now been completed there we are oh, picture's quite dark the last one wasn't too bright because it was sunny this one's a bit too dark because it's cloudy and rainy <laughs> i can't win but there we go there's our next one so i'm pleased with those um a little bit different i don't i wouldn't always have colored them in that way but it's nice to do something like the key rusty key um you know purple mushrooms and things it's just nice to do something a little bit different for you give you some ideas um if you don't like it you don't have to do it but it's uh, it's a bit of fun i think so that's those we've got one more to go as i think that there's going to be a planner page tomorrow and then the next one and the next one comes out on the same day that johanna basford's book comes out in america which is very exciting for all of you over there, and I'm very jealous. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, exciting stuff. But uh, thank you so much for watching today. Um, I hope that you have a super day, and happy colouring.